103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, January 24th, uh, 11 a.m. I'm, I'm Doubter 5 or Larry Rhodes. And as usual, we have our co host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Kick, punch, it's all in the mind. I'll take your word for it. Um, and our guests today are Doubtfire, Boudreaux, uh, George, and we have a special guest, Elmo Adar. Hello well, uh, and welcome. Um, let's see. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there was an atheist call-in video show broadcasting from Knoxville and has been for over 10 years? You keep surprising me with this. I thought they canceled it because of COVID, but I'm glad the E3 is coming back. I'm looking forward to those video games. Let's go. Video games? No. Get on. We'll tell you more about how you can find them after the mid-show break. Uh, Wombat, what are we doing today? What's in a name? What's in a name? What's in a name? We're going to be talking about labels today. and We have our own guest to lead us on the conversation. Uh, if Dread Pirate was here, we're going to be doing an invocation. But since he's not here, we're going to do a quick, quick, quick favorite game that I love to call. What you guys been doing last week? <laughs> <laughs> Boudreaux, sorry for, for, sorry for blowing up the mic. You got a really fancy, nice, shiny piece of equipment in front of you. What's going on over there? What's going I, I on? I sure, I sure did. Um, it's um, it's a, uh, a a chair, a bar stool <laughs> chair. So it's real. It kind of gets me sitting upright. Oh there. man! Yeah. yeah, it's right yeah. in this, this area right here. Oh, I love uh, it. No, no, I'm loving the new mic. And yeah. Thanks for the recommendation. And uh, I think it's going to make me sound smarter. It's gonna it's gonna definitely put that uh, that warm crisp um, Chad vibe into into yeah, everything yes. that you do. It's real good. It's gonna be really yeah. nice. George Brown, the second. How have you the been second. doing? Second. How you been doing? Well, um, I lost a relative to COVID last week. Oh no! I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, somebody I never met. He's like the brother-in-law of my cousin, and. When I read about him, I thought, boy, I am so sorry that I never knew him. Mm. And now, of course, I can't. And um, uh, the other news is that I got my COVID vaccination. What? Oh, good. On Congratulations. Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday. And it was a pretty bizarre experience. But, you know... One of these days, I, I mean, will. They put it in your butt, right? Like that's where that's no, the only no, place no. that works in your body. In, in my shoulder. Oh, you got the wrong one. No, oh. hang it out the window, right? That's the microchip. COVID. Yeah, that's COVID with the K. <laughs> you need to get the yeah. You got the microchip. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the system. Welcome yeah. to the system. Bill Gates up in that butt. I'm I'm sorry for your loss, but I'm also glad that you you're taking the steps to keep yourself here as long as possible, George. Well, I'm I, 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 I'm planning on going to walmart in about a month and uh, uh with a mask still right oh yes but once somebody passes me who's not wearing a mask i will lower my mask and cough don't do that that's uh, that's that's, that's, bio, that's a no, act of no, bioterrorism not even a we do not support that joke and no. fcc radio we we do not support that no calls to action george you're in the you're in the hot chair scott <laughs> how have you been what have you been doing last week Man, I've been, well, um, outside of just work, I've been adding to my little studio. So oh, okay. Like I told you last time. So what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? What's oh, the coolest, man. newest thing? Oh, he's got it right here. I got it What's right up, here. We're doing introduction or we're doing just how you've been last week. So oh, he's got a mix board. Oh, he's got buttons. Ooh, it's a no <laughs> circuit. So it's a little groove box synthesizer. And I'm just adding more and more pieces like that to expand the dub shine sound. Is it modular? Can you like connect on both sides of it and stuff like yes. that? Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yep. I Very was good. considering getting one of those things, but I I don't know 
if I could deal with just the the button. If I get that something with that many buttons, I'm gonna just start like uh, a <laughs> rabbit hole dive into literally living <laughs> on a bed full of buttons. I don't know what to do with myself. Oh yeah. Don't ever get into ham radio because it's all about <laughs> <laughs> Chad, you're still setting up. But hey, uh, how you been? How, what's going on with you, Chad? It's good to see you again. Uh, I'm all right. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, I didn't yeah, have yeah. an opportunity to do sound check. Um, we're, do we're doing my favorite section. We're just checking in and seeing how you've been since last week. How you been? Uh, pretty good. I did a crazy cool sleep study uh, oh. Friday night all the way through Saturday. Okay. So that, did that, you pass? I did pass. Nice. I'm, I'm okay. It was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was easy as sleeping. I'm looking for the right someone who's wittier than me would have been able to pull. So that Chad, off. Chad was you was that for CPAP machine? Uh, uh, CPAP slash narcolepsy. So yeah. yeah, they're thinking that I might be narcoleptic, which is a joy. Um, but hey, a diagnosis is uh, better than okay. not. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Truth. I've been through that. I've been through that. It's very yep. interesting. Yeah. If you were single, that would be really great on a Tinder profile too. Just saying. <laughs> right. Like, like that's yeah. the thing. That's the thing everyone wants to look for. I'm so working my way toward full Darth Vader. So. <laughs> I thought Tinder wasn't for single. <laughs> oh, I thought it was. I, I don't know how things work. Help me out, guys. All right. I, I, I'm nowhere near knowing what that means anyway. So, hey, yeah. Chad, I saw that new podcast that you and Boudreaux put out. Uh, is that yeah, sorry possibly about that. going to be released to the wild, or is this still in the lockdown? I think so. I, I'm, I'm okay to green light it. I really am. Uh, we've got a few that we recorded. I think we had a couple that we did with Fanny last year. Nice. They are probably a dive uh, back in time quite a bit. They, they were the first stages of COVID. <laughs> yeah. So they were just like, yeah, there's this thing like a flu going around. Uh, yeah. You might want to yeah. review right. the audio, just make sure it's okay. Yeah, yeah. we probably do. <laughs> we probably do. Especially with Fanny. I, I'd like to get, I think I said last time, I'd like to get uh, like 10 in the can before we let them loose just so people that. can have an opportunity to kind of get hooked you know nice. or, or or have um, a bench that they can go back to sure but it's not necessary uh but i yeah and, you're and right it's not risk. necessary i just go ahead personally yeah. i say go for it i say yeah, go for it go for it you, uh, learning how to publish is its own muscle that you need to keep working on too so like yeah i'd say push it out well that's Elmo. the reason that i want to go ahead and do it and and uh, Boudreaux and I, or Eric and I, whatever we're doing, um, we, we let, uh, what's, what's the thing we keep saying? Don't let perfect get in the way of good enough or right. something like right. that. Right. Good. So, yeah. We need to get it out there so we can start learning. We, sure. we need criticism. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you grow. Yep. Right. So we're going to go to our guest of honor, Elmo, just after we cover, uh, our, my good friend, Larry, Larry, how you been? Um, oh, I'm doing fine. Week. Um, getting a little bit of cabin fever. It was pretty the last couple of days, really nice outside, cold, but yeah. nice. Mm. So, but I'm still inside playing computer games and doing Facebook and videos and stuff. No bad. Uh, it makes me want to get out and drive around or something. Yeah. I'm imagine if we had COVID back in like the industrial age, you'd just be like watching a candle wick burn down. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> count your blessing. Or the fireplace. Yeah. Okay. The fireplace. <laughs> uh, I'd like to uh, introduce our, our guest for today. Uh, we, his name is Elmo Ader Jr. That's A-D-O-R. He has his own podcast. So would you like to get into that for us a little bit, Elmo, and introduce yourself? Yeah, man. Um, hi, I'm Elmo. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm from the Philippines. I'm 21 years old. And my podcast is called Elmo's World Podcast. It's on Spotify, iTunes, and everywhere else you can find a podcast. Uh, basically, I interview people about their philosophical and religious worldviews, right? So I get guests that from from all sides of the spectrum, Muslim, atheist, Christian, Hindus, uh, any any kind of worldview that you could imagine. I probably interviewed someone of that sort. And um, yeah, I'm really glad that uh, and happy that you guys have invited me here. And it's really awesome to uh, get to know all of you. And um, just, uh, I guess, a little background on my worldview. I, I, I'm, I, ha I was raised a Christian and I'm still a Christian. Uh, specifically Baptist, but I do hold certain views about Christianity that are not part of the spe that specific denomination. And um, yeah, that, that, I guess that's uh, sort of the only thing I guess that I can tell you guys. Okay. Well, we welcome your questions about atheism because all of us here are atheists. We 
we have the one thing in common. The thing, one thing all atheists have is just we don't believe in God. After that, everything's open for grabs. Mm -hmm. We could believe, like Buddhists, they don't believe that Buddha was a god, so technically mm -hmm. they're atheists. Of course, but that's they Star Trek's better all, than Star Wars. You know, but after mm -hmm. that, you know, their beliefs go all different directions. So um, mm -hmm. um, we turn it over to your questions and your yeah. uh, interviews as awesome. were from that okay. side. Okay, then I'll, I'll pretend that I'm like the interviewer, and I'm gonna ask you all of you guys. And <laughs> okay, and okay um, I guess Ideally start with one yeah, at a time. Why don't you just go to Larry? Go go to Larry first, and we can do. Okay, one. Larry. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the the only thing that I read that uh, that when I ask an atheist that comes to a head stop or hard stop is for it when I ask them about morality, right? Mm -hmm. If 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 I ask them like, uh, what is your standard of morality? It, it either has to be subjective or no standard at all, right? Well, I'm, it I'm, from... uh, I'm a human, so I'm, mm -hmm. I use harm as my standard. It's subjective. I don't have any problem with being subjective mm -hmm. because if you have it objective, then you have to go to the person or the authority figure that's laying down the objective standard. And the only thing that we can know for sure is humans. Um, there is no proof for a God. There's no evidence for a God. There's no evidence for a soul or anything supernatural. We have no way of uh, testing it. It's an untestable claim. So when it comes to morality, how can we, how can we appeal to something that we've never seen, heard, or had any evidence mm -hmm. for? Mm -hmm. um, I did a whole mm -hmm. uh, blog post on uh, my digitalfreethought.com, the blog, mm -hmm. about that. And the thing about it is, uh, Christians claim that morality comes from the Bible. But if you uh, go to the Bible, it has things like um, slavery, um, killing mm -hmm. non-virgin women on their wedding night, uh, unruly mm -hmm. children, um, homosexuals. Uh, and you you don't believe those are immoral, do you? Well, I guess I would I would have to be really specific, right? Because you well, let's talk about slavery then. Do you believe uh, slavery is moral? Yeah, what I'm saying, uh, I guess I. I what I'm saying is, <laughs> if you you use a separate moral compass yourself to be able to look at the Bible and say. This is moral, this is not. This is moral, this is not. And if you're getting your morals from the Bible, it would all be moral, wouldn't it? Larry, I would also say, give Elmo some time to answer the questions uh, as well. I am. Too. Uh, yeah, yeah I, you're doing a great job. Uh, Elmo, would you mind, just so we all know what we're dealing well, with? Well, I guess <laughs> what flavor of Christianity we're dealing with? Baptism. Why I, Baptism. Do you think, do you, uh, specifically on Larry's question, do you think slavery is a moral thing? Hmm. That the that fr if I were a Christian, right, and I w I were to come to this review, I would say that that the that si anything that is sin, that is, that that disobeys God's uh, order, divine command, which is to love your neighbor as yourself and to love God, but above everything else, right? Then that. That would be sin. So, in any case, in any situation that say slavery is a sin, then I would say it is immoral. Immoral. Okay. So I, when I, it's mandated, oh, Larry, when it's mandated in the Bible and say Exodus 21 uh, as clear laws for Moses and his group of people, was it not a sin then? Uh, uh, I guess like I would have to read about the, the, the Bible first, right? Uh, can I go okay, to that verse? Good. Okay. I can, I can, okay, yeah, uh, I can say this. I'm getting a better idea what kind of Christian we're dealing with, at least for the conversation that we're having. Uh, it's a very, it's not a politically crazy thing to say that it's wrong to own people as property. And I don't need to look into a book to figure that out because there's harm when it comes to subjugating people as non-human. And I don't need a book to tell me that that's wrong. I don't need to look it up. And I think that's the distinction that I think we should look at. When you ask an atheist, is it wrong to own people? They don't need to look it up in a book or a chapter to figure it out. It's an easy assessment to assume that 
I wouldn't want to be a slave, and therefore I shouldn't treat someone else like And all the nations of the world have come to the same conclusion. Yeah, it's, and it might be a subjective nature of me not wanting to be a slave, but I don't need to look it up in a book to figure that out. It's an issue of just understanding the consequences of my actions mm -hmm. and trying to well, reduce harm. Well, I, well, I guess like, I, I, I never said that, it, that I, I condoned any of it. I was just wanting to like look at it from a case-to-case -case basis. I guess uh, like I would say in really every case it's wrong. Situation. Every case it's immoral. I don't need to look it up. It's you don't own people as property. They are always treated as a mm -hmm. never as a means to an end, but as agents with respect mm -hmm. and with empathy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with value as a human mm -hmm. being. They have those rights. Larry, what do you yeah, got? Uh, I was just uh, gonna ask him to uh, Tyrone, to pick... I wish that Larry, what were you saying? I just was going to ask him to pick somebody and, and, and address the question to that person. Uh, I've answered or at least attempted morality. You've attempted sure. sin. So yeah. if he, you know, as he comes up with different questions, he can ask different people. Cool. So Elmo, why don't you ask your next question? Scott, will, Scott, would you mind being cool taking it? You guys had a great comment. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Cool. Elmo, go on ahead and uh, feed back to Scott. I'll put myself in mute. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, I actually wanted to like respond to Larry and then Tyrone <laughs> because okay. you, you guys did uh, say some things. Yeah, but, but you know, we, me and Scott, we could talk later. But yeah, um, I guess like in response to Tyrone, I would, I guess, like have to ask him about where he is coming from, you know, in, in how he defines what morality is i guess same with larry right because you know if, if you were to ask me what what the basis of my morality is i would have to look at look at it from you're lying you're losing really bad Elmo. claim it from an objective standpoint but if if you can i stop my video or yeah that yeah will, absolutely yeah, absolutely that will help you i think Okay, cool. Well, Such a yeah. Funny picture. So, uh, what I was I, <laughs> what I was, what I was saying was, with Tyrone and Larry come from a subjective, uh, clay uh, standpoint in morality, right? Therefore, from where, from from what I guess standard are you actually? I guess criticizing my worldview, right? Because if you were to 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 say that, oh, the Bible is immoral. That, but but you're simply coming from some some from a point or standpoint that is subjective then where but what point are you actually coming from then because if it's true purely subjective then <coughs> others could be right you know and anybody could be right and anybody could be wrong so yeah so am, am i still breaking up no um scott why don't we direct that kind of question sure. to Scott? Absolutely. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, so um, morality and, you know, um, ethics <clears throat> are grounded in subjective opinions, right? So well, not for me, all. the way I, the, well, yeah. from my view, um, if it wasn't subjective, then it wouldn't be morality by definition. You would just be following orders. And if you were to follow, like if Hitler was to say, was the objective standard and his rule, his moral code was to kill Jews, then if you didn't follow his orders, then you would be immoral by definition. But we know that that's not true. You know, um, that's not necessarily moral. That's his morality. His morals say that. But our morals say something different. And where they're rooted in, is in nature. It's rooted in our empathy and our um, in mm -hmm. evolution. You know, our, we evolve mm -hmm. to cooperate and to thrive and procreate. And so our empathetic nature is what guides our moral conscience. Um, we kind of spoke about that yesterday, but so that's where I would say we get our morals from. Now they're subjective because they, they're within each person. So, but any any time you look for um, an authority for your for how to behave, that's not morality. That's just following orders. It's obedience. Yeah. Obedience, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I guess you did uh, sort of say, I guess, uh, two things there in in defense of subjective morality and I guess uh, in, in 
in, in criticizing objective morality. So if I were to, and you, you claim though, right, that, that we humans, our subjective morality is based on empathy, which is mainly coming from our evolutionary uh, attained attributes, right? So right. if I, be, because I am evolutionarily uh, brought by naturalistic phenomenon and events to be empathetic, therefore I ought to be empathetic. If that's the case, then I, if I was evolved to be ruthless, if I was evolved to be not empathetic, should I also be not empathetic? If that's the case, then... Right. Yeah. yeah, I understand what you mean. And, and that's the thing. Um, I don't know if I buy into the is ought um, yeah. fallacy because, you know, um, is and oughts are kind of separate from what's moral, from mm -hmm. morality, right? Mm -hmm. So I could, you know, killing my neighbor could be immoral. Um, that's separate from whether I ought to do it or not. Mm -hmm. And even the okay. least... And Elmo, just to add to that, in a, in a less extreme sense, it's just morality is sort of the process of mentally thinking about whether you should or shouldn't do something based on its consequences, whereas is or ought is more of the conclusion of the fact. It's like its own separate outcome, but mm -hmm. morality is the process that leads us to the outcome, and that's how we think about mm -hmm. it. And we can base that process on a list of rules that we subjectively value, but once we have that rule set, we can objectively reach our goal or not reach our goal. And that's the value of thinking mm -hmm. about processes. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little more complicated than looking it up in the Bible, I, I admit. But I would say this, and, and hopefully the next question goes to the next guy, I can also be objectively wrong. I could write down today is yeah. January 1st in a book, and that book is objectively incorrect. So just because something's objective doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Something subjective could also be false. So it's not a question of whether it's objective or subjective that I value, it's a question of whether or not it can reduce harm and whether or not it's an appropriate way to conduct my actions in a society where my actions have consequences. Mm -hmm. And I find that a subjective rule that's caters to the values of a group mm -hmm. of people can be much more effective at reducing harm than an objective mm -hmm. principle, which might overlook certain things and may have to actually lead it to academics to figure out whether or not people should be owned as property. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear a next would... question and, and could you target it yeah, to the next yeah. person? But I would like to respond to that for a, for a <laughs> sure. Hey, yeah, you can come back on every okay. show. You can come back on every show and talk <laughs> yeah, every yeah. single thing. But I guess, but, like, yeah, uh, uh, that that you did say, say a good point, right? Like, so you you differentiated sh what uh, what should be and what ought to be, right? So I, I see no difference, really. Like, so I, sh I, I should or shouldn't kill my neighbor, and I ought and not ought to kill my neighbor. I, I see no difference in in how those two are defined. Can you be, uh, I guess, like, be Oh, great question specific? for Boudreaux. Boudreaux, I, I, believe it or not, these are fairly... These are fairly well traveled topics for, <laughs> for ABC. Yeah, yeah. And so I will, I will I will leave it to Boudreaux to even answer for me. I guarantee you'll probably say the exact same thing I'd say. Okay. You, you may be giving me some credit here uh, that that I don't have. Uh, that, I guess I've heard this conversation before, but it's not something I uh, uh, retain terribly You're, well. So can uh, you restate his question for him so we make sure we understand it? Good job, Elmo. Could you restate the yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, because, so uh, my ter my friend Tyrone here said that the, in terms of morality, right? It's it's a, morality is a, more of a question of whether I should or should not, and it's not it's not the case of I ought and ought not, right? As Scott mm -hmm. has. Can I clarify? Also, uh, yeah. uh, um, he the way how I interpreted this statement before is that morality mm -hmm. is specifically talking about a process of thought mm -hmm. that could lead to an ought or is ought situation, but is or ought and should and shouldn't could be completely different things mm -hmm. that someone yeah. could do. Absolutely. Yeah. Eric, do you think that's a thing? Do you think yeah. like what you're morally obligated to do might be different from what you should do? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think so. I, yeah. The morality is, is, the, is the process um, and we've talked about this before on the show that, you mm. know, we are uh, having to, our brains are having to try to understand these things and create analogies and things that are more familiar. So you have to kind of put it in a scenario where you kind of, you, you process a complicated, I mean, if it's a simple decision that, that that's much easier for us to, 
to put into words, but if it's something more complicated, mm -hmm. we need to come up with a process mm -hmm. to try to mm -hmm. decide to make a decision. And then, yeah, the conclusion is the, is the ought or ought not. So that, that would be, I, I would think those are very different things. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm confused George. why you would conflate them. Uh, would you give some time to George Elmo? He raised his hand and we normally- Yeah, yeah, yeah. George, why don't you take sure, yourself yeah, off George. mute? Go for it. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Uh, I un you unmuted myself. Um, I, I'm noticing the absence of the word ethics in this conversation and I wanna bring it in. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Because the word, uh, now I'm not used to having arguments of this type. Mm. Uh, it's not where I live. I was raised an atheist, and um, I've never really had to get into conversations about um, things like like this. And but um, so I'm thinking of the word ethics as opposed to morals. And I'm going to go to psychology today and read a little bit from there. Article. Oh, no. Hey, make it quick, George. We got a lot of people. <laughs> it will be. It will be. <laughs> okay. 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 Ethics represent the moral code that guides a person's choices and behaviors through their life. The idea of a moral code extends beyond the individual to include what is determined to be right and wrong for a community or a society at large. Ethics is concerned with rights, responsibilities, use of language, what it means to live an ethical life, and how people make moral decisions. We may think of moralizing as an intellectual exercise, but more frequently it's an attempt to make sense of our gut instincts and reactions, et cetera, et cetera. It's a long, it's a long piece. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, uh, ethics is concerned with right and wrong, as as um, the determination is based upon our own inner sense of what's right and wrong. And morals mm -hmm. comes from an external authority of some yeah. kind, mm -hmm. just, such, just, such oh, as just, religion. Just because we're waiting for so, or Chad was waiting for so long, Chad, would you like to weigh in on what you think the difference between should and ought is for you? It's It's hard for me to separate the two, honestly. I think it might be for a lot of people. Um, and the difference between ethics and morals on occasion gets lost on me. I know it's not a semantical argument. I know they are two completely different things. Yeah. I'm not very well versed on the resolution, uh, you know, uh, where one falls and, and where the, where the boundary of one is and the other begins. Yes, uh, so I don't know if I'm the, the right person to, uh, describe the difference. I really- I, Chad, I really... I'll bounce that idea off of you. How about this? Uh, yep. I'm just going this from my own studies. Uh, I had some morality and ethics classes in, during my uh, collegiate times. Mm. And I found that ought implies a moral obligation. Uh, and we'll wait for Elmo. Yeah, he'll come back. He'll oh. come right back. Ought implies a moral obligation. I mm. ought to be kind to you. I ought not to stab you with a knife because I don't want to be stabbed with a knife because I want people to be nice to me. There's a moral obligation for me when I say ought. When I say should, there's no moral obligation there. I should eat some pizza. <laughs> I, should, I should get some pepperoni on that pizza and I should get that roasted must garlic sauce they put on the outside. Ooh, I should get that barbecue sauce that they put on there. None of those have moral obligations to them. They're just things that I can okay. do, maybe uh, things that I, I can persuade someone to do, but there's no obligation if you, you should buy a car today. It's like, yeah, I don't want to buy a car today. You ought to buy a car. It's like, how, what is the moral obligation that shows I, I have to buy a car today? Demonstrate okay. that for me. That's a much more powerful case. That's the distinction, at least classically, uh, okay. between those two words. But, Got it. Yeah. All so right. in, in, in common talk or like just layman speech, you can swatch the two between the two. I, I don't think there's that much of a distinction between the two. It's all just a question of what do you mean when you say it? And it's fair enough to ask someone that. Larry, what's your question? Or what I just wanted name? to get back to, he mentioned sin a little bit earlier, and sure. I, I just wanted to make a point that <clears throat> sin is a trespass against God. It's a disobedience to God's rules, God's uh, order. Um, if there are no gods, like all of us believe that there are no gods, there is no there such thing be. as sin. Sin is taught to you uh, by, the, by the church in order for you to 
uh, do what they tell you to do because they, the church, tells you what God wants you to do and tells you, interprets the Bible for you. So uh, sin itself is a concept sold to you by the church. Mm. So it's just something that we needed to revisit before we talk about sin and morality. Scott, what you got for us? Yeah, I was just going to say um, more to Elmo's point. Um, and, and this is this is sort of falling into what they call the presuppositional argument for morality and God. Mm. Um, basically, what is is never is kind of overlooked is that we are always the authority. See, the argument is that I'm not the authority. The Bible's the authority. But for you to take the Bible as an authority, you would have to be the authority to make that decision. You would have to read the Bible and then discern whether this is from God and whether this is moral. So at the end of the day, you're the authority anyways. So it's Mm -hmm. all subjective at the end of the day. Even if you consider the Bible as your standard, you subjectively chose that over, say, the Quran or over, Mm -hmm. say, something else or certain things in the bible you subjectively choose which ones you can obey old testament versus the new testament elmo are you still here yeah 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 i I guess i did get the gist of what scott said right like um how do i know then right in turn let's talk about epistemology here how do i know some of us love that word yeah yeah (laughs) exactly i i love that too right Uh, so how do i know that that my that what i believe or to be good or bad or wrong or or evil is actually that which that 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 is that thing that is evil or good well i guess i have to, i would have to c- call upon the innate disposition that we humans have and which is that we ha- are created with conscience right and and from that it would have to rely on my ontological claims so in order for y- you to i guess like say that oh man uh, y- your conscience is wrong because God is not real. So I guess that it, it would have to come down to that. I wasn't following. Could you could you try one more time to explain that maybe with easier English? Uh, I got a little bit yeah. lost. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, basically what I said was that um, – I base my my my, uh, my my subject. I guess it is sort of subjective, but it's simply based on my ontological claims. Ontological being that when I, when I be I believe that God is real and claim positively that God is real, then I, it, that would be that would have to be the foundation or the real reason uh, or the the basis of why I claim that my, that my morality is something that is objective uh, that I'm is sorry. objective so it's saying like it's true it's demonstrably true that i have consciousness because i believe in god is that what you're saying no it, it's not consciousness i i it, we have conscience conscience, conscience. i i yeah. have a conscience because i believe in god is that is that the epistemology because because god is real not because i believe in god well that's just a, a claim yeah. Yes, it, it is a claim, right. but in in terms of that claim, then we would I get to a metaphysical discussion of whether or not God could or couldn't exist. Well, mm-hmm. let's let's get back to your ontological claims. Uh, you say you know, consciousness is, is real because God created it. Well, every religion on the planet who believes in a God <laughs> believes that that their God created consciousness. And their God created the universe, and can, their can God pause, created. I, I think know. I think we're mishearing a word here. Conscience. Elmo, you're you're saying yeah, conscience, conscience, like, yeah, conscience, like good, good sentience. Good or, no, 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 no. not con- like, consciousness. Like, like uh, yeah, conscience. conscience. Like oh, like, like, like your ability to tell wrong from good. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, oh, thanks, Jim oh, and Cricket. Okay, okay, okay. Those yeah. two words sound the same. Go yeah. for it. I think it still gets down to the same. Yeah, point. same thing. Yeah. Same thing to Larry. Yeah. Uh, so it, even if a God existed and it created the Chimney universe cricket. and consciousness and conscience and all that, it doesn't necessarily have to be your God, does it? I mean, it could be a deist God or a God that we've never heard of before. 
So it doesn't really point to your God. This is the point yeah. that I'm trying to make. Yeah. You know, I guess that it, there there are a lot of um, arguments that it entails too. For that 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 is why we discuss we we discuss theology, philosophy, and that and we have to look at the the arguments for classical theism. And there are many that point and indicate the sort that and actually direct them to to for us to believe in a Christian God. So let's get back to epistemology. Let's not even worry yeah. about their different religions. How sure. do you know? Hey, how you about got you got a you got a bullet in the in the holster in the that chamber. I want to see shot? Yeah, I don't know gun. I don't know gun stuff. I don't know tender stuff or gun stuff. I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I'm a non-gunner. Anyway, so how about we do this right after the uh, break and the show right break. back to it? Yeah, yeah. Larry, why don't you take us out? This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Okay, welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP up here, here right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, January 24th. Um, now let's talk about the atheists and free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. It was founded in 2002, and we're in our 19th year now. And when we have over a 1,000 members, you can find us by going to Google and type in Knoxville Atheist, and you should be able to find either our uh, meetup, our Facebook page, or our web pages. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about the Atheist a video show that the Knoxville Atheists have been putting out. It's called Free Thought. Free Thought Forum Knoxville for the last 10 years, and recently it's been called uh, Free Thinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. So look for either one of those in YouTube, and you'll be able to find their archives. Uh, with us today on the show, we have Doubtfire, uh, George, uh, Chad, and Elmo Alder, Ad Ador, <laughs> and our usual co-host, Ty uh, Tyron Wells, or Wombat. Uh, where did we leave off, Wombat? Where did we? We were talking off? about the vaccination plan, which was non-existing mm -hmm. during the Trump administration. That, oh my gosh, that's so crazy! Thankfully, Fauci was doing a press conference, and he was like, "Hey, we finally have an administration that loves science and not impeding it." I can't tell you how great this is. And the uh, the reporters are all like, "What? Are you saying you're a fan of this president?" And Fauci was like, "A fan? What a fan! What a fan! What a fan! What a mighty good fan! <laughs> what a mighty mighty good fan!" You guys got. Got to get in on that more. Got to get in. We got it. one more time. One more time. <laughs> well done, Larry. What a fan! What a fan! What a fan! What a mighty good fan! What a mighty, what a mighty, mighty, mighty good, good fan! fan. Yeah. Yeah. I was on mute. I was on mute. Nice, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Guys, we have listener feedback from our fans. Hey, if you want to leave a feedback, go on ahead and put a comment in the YouTube videos that you guys see this on. Whatever podcast service you see this on, we'll go over on the next week's show. Last week's show was but 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 free speech where we talked about what does it mean to have free speech and uh, what does it look like when it's actually being taken away from you and what does it look like when people just say that it is? <laughs> and Christopher Lee said, hey, the right of free speech protects against the government cracking down on your speech as it should, but it doesn't mean anything in regards to what private platforms can do. And I think he was referring to uh, private platforms such as like Instagram, Twitter, and, and other groups that said, hey, after the Capitol rights, uh, we have to stand up for, you know, what could be easily perceived by people as advice from the chief of state to inflict violence on our government and democracy, which is unacceptable. We don't want to have a part of that. It's against our terms and service to incite such things, uh, which we would equally do to anybody else, which they have. Uh, people have been banned on those platforms before. Right. So if anything, there shouldn't be any exceptions, whether you're you know, a president or a civilian. They uh, ought not allow that. They ought <laughs> not allow that. And they also should not allow that too. Right. <laughs> Sometimes they agree. Trump is the moral standard. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Philip Pomfret says, thumbs up, smiley face. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Uh, J.E. Hoyes has umbrage with Eric, and I wanted to... Yeah, I know, right? So, Eric, oh, in, in his last conversation, he timestamped it even. He said, Eric made the comment that there was a um, an ex-Muslim who had gotten some flat from a group of people on, on the internet, and essentially, that person took that person to court, 
and won the court case that this was actually like a form of libel and got away with it or, or, or and successfully showed like hey this is not accurate and these people should be punished for that and it's not a free speech issue it's like you can punish people for putting you in a public space and, and saying objectively incorrect things about you and what eric had said was uh uh this guy isn't a bigot he's an ex-muslim and someone said hey you can be an ex-muslim and a bigot but i replied and said and eric i'll give you time to, to respond to this too i was like i don't think eric was saying like just because you're ex-muslim you're automatically not a bigot i think the impression was like hey here's a guy who cares a lot about critical thinking to the point where he was able to leave a very dogmatic point of view and that should be uh, a, a reflection on his character and so like and that also implies like hey he's probably not he's not into the rationale of like certain people are better than other people and we should treat people fairly and that's why he went through the whole court process in the first place eric do you remember that conversation yeah. from last week yeah absolutely first of all i finally got mentioned in the comments yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th thank you guy whoever posted uh, J. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the other thing is i yeah. i specifically said i know i'm gonna get flack for this <laughs> what i what i said was I, I i actually didn't i didn't intend to make it sound like uh he was a bigot and an ex-Muslim. I was just saying he is an ex-Muslim. I was just describing him. And I even said at the end of the show, I was wrong. I didn't mean to say that. Um, I think I was mixing up him with Sarah Hader. Uh, uh, Majin Nawaz is Muslim. He just went from an extreme Muslim mm. to a uh, normal Muslim. I, I don't right know. He, the mill. He, he went he from got an a, Islamist. Metropol he, yeah. Metropolitan. Uh, right. He got out of the terrorism side of it. So he still believes and still practices. And Chad, you probably know more about him than I do. But um, yeah, uh, I, I, your point is exactly right. I wasn't trying to say, I was just saying that he was speaking out against these terrorists and these bad thoughts and bad ideas, hmm. um, regardless of his Muslimicity. Whoa. <laughs> Talk Hold about new comments that we're going to be waiting for bridge. next week. All right. <laughs> so suck. direct your comments to the bottom below. His name is Boudreaux and you, you, you glutton right for punishment. <laughs> so close. You're a one word away. You're a one Man. word away. You're so close there. <laughs> anyway, we're going to leave it up to uh, Elmo to continue on the conversation. Elmo, where would you like to continue? Oh, uh, can we, and Scott had a really good thing. Apology, that I think. Yes. So, uh, yes. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, so I wanted to figure out the your um, method for knowing whether there's a God. Like, um, how can we test that? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, for one, you know, I, I also look at the Kalam cosmological argument, intelligent design argument. You know, we discussed this yesterday, but um, I guess I would have to also uh, look at simply the you know, the hard problem of consciousness. And, but, you know, I guess that you could arrive at this from something like a natural pantheist as we, me and Scott discussed yesterday, but how I would direct it to a, to us, to a really specific God, I would say it's that it's there in, if you are looking at something that is a necessary being, Right, and it, if if it has to be the necessary cause for everything, then there would have to be some sort of agency by which that would that that being could to, could cause something to exist, or actually there would be some th sort of movement from outwards, you know, or of of making things exist right and in the i guess if you look at the the con the classical theist concept of god it really fits the bill here so i think that's that's the g biggest argument that uh, we can look at so let me just repeat back what you said just for clarity um so basically you're saying that everything that exists must have come about by some sort of agency and this being has agency. When you say being, I think you're speaking in the uh, philosophical sort of thing, like yeah. just something that is, that is. And then you're saying that thing that is has to have volitional agency and free will to create things and stuff of that nature, right? Yeah. Okay. What, so what how do you did mean you by agency? That? What well, that's that? what he's saying. It's volitional. Yeah, we can talk about that later. Yeah. So how did you determine that it must have 
agency and not have to have a creator itself yeah so i guess like it it, it i guess it from the argument that we're looking at here that it's already uh, I guess established that in order for it to be logical that this necessary being thing, right? It, it must have, I guess, like a sort of a movement fra, from simply just, oh, oh, my internet is uh, unstable, but yeah, a, a sort of a movement outwards or to a certain direction. Right. It, it, if it, it's simply like uh, something that is is and the, does not have any sort of agency that you would expect from simply a, a pantheist god, then it there wouldn't be any a, anything at all. It would be just be nothing. Okay. Is there? Can you think of any examples of things that come into existence without agency? Well, I guess if if you're looking for an empirical uh, the demonstration that then that I, I wouldn't be able to give that. But I guess when when you're looking at metaphysics here, then we have to dive and use instruments like logic and rationality and what, right. what would make sense. But the question yeah. was just simply: Can you think of any example in your mind, anything that you've observed of something? that came into existence without agency. Even if you don't know the answer to this, Elmo, you can take your time to think about it. Um, I think it's a good question that Scott asked, just a question of, do you have a frame of reference to know what it would look like of things that are brought into existence without agency? And you don't have to come up with an answer now. I would like to see what Chad thinks about, generally the conversation in general, uh, Chad, you have a you don't have as what I would say a, a black and white point of view on on these on these questions, and but you would still consider yourself amenable to the term atheist, and I think that shows a lot to the the spectrum of people who are like in this capacity. Would you mind talking about like your perspective a little bit, and like what is your opinion on God and what you think God exists or doesn't exist, etc. I just think God's unnecessary. Um, even in these conversations about morality or ethics, mm. uh, it doesn't, I don't, I don't need God. And um, so I don't create him like some other people thousands of years ago have. Uh, I, I don't, I don't feel the need to, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, yeah. My morality and ethics come from what I am. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't need to have an ultimate creator tell me why I'm here or what I should, shouldn't, ought do. Uh, we don't need that. Uh, it, it seems like a lazy thing to do, to give up all of that agency um, to a God or a book that has destroyed many people's lives. Mm -hmm. I think I break it down to the individual level. I don't throw myself into very many groups of people. I don't ask what we should do. I ask what I should, or now <laughs> I'll make the, I guess I'll make the difference now, what I should or ought to do. Um, I, I don't ask anyone to pay for my mistakes. I pay for my own and uh, I reap my benefits. I learn as I move through this and I am constantly in reflection. Uh, on the things that I've done, the things I've brought into the world and the things that I may have destroyed, opportunities that I've missed or opportunities that I've denied other people because of my actions. I just, I think life is a lot of work and I think you should be very busy examining yourself and uh, worry about that. And you don't need God to do that. I, I would never uh, assume that it's okay for me to chastise someone about their the way they've been created, because I don't want anyone to do it to me. The golden rule is what keeps me from having to reflect on a book. And um, I've been wrong before, and it's not a book that's, that's taught me that. It's been other people. Um, fellowship without a book. Uh, so, you know, I know that the fellowship's important for Christians, mm -hmm. but it's important for humanity. We're social creatures. We learn from one another. And 
Slavery used to be an okay thing to do, you know, going back to slavery. Now it's not. It's not the Bible that taught us that. It's working with each other and coming to an understanding and listening to one another and having some compassion, yep. which I learned quite a bit of, about compassion from Buddhism. I used to be a Buddhist. I'm not anymore. I don't guess. I mean, I do some Buddhism, but I, I wouldn't really necessarily call myself a Buddhist. I don't know why I don't. I just don't like what, labels. What's a Buddha with you? <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> so I uh, guess I Elmo, guess I'll just leave it there. I, I'm yeah. going on. Elmo, I'd love for you to weigh in on that. Um, uh, we're getting closer towards the end of the show. Did you have uh, uh, thoughts on what Chad just brought to the table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I guess like uh, Scott... Uh, oh, yeah. Ch Chad was, I guess, like so someone who's simply having uh, intellectual integrity, I guess, to what he stands for. Right. And mm -hmm. if you're if you're someone who doesn't see value in in being argumentative or militant about uh, beliefs and if you you would just want mutual respect, then and, and I guess like we, we need more people like you, bro. <laughs> well yeah. that's very flattering <laughs> okay george hey i want to throw a question out at george and then i'd love to have elmo respond to what george is going to say um the idea of subjectivity uh subjectivity means different people coming to different conclusions based on different rules that they may have um i find that humanity is fairly subjective like different groups of people will believe different things but that doesn't mean that the rules that we come up with are perfect because we are inherently valuable and we can learn a lot from each other to improve how we treat each other. And so whatever objective standard that we think we have at the moment in terms of how to treat people on a moral basis could very well improve over time. And we don't typically see that until we have some time. So George, I'm gonna throw this out at you. Um, are you perfect? <laughs> or do you, yes, do you, do you, I, I am perfect. I, hey, I used to be. I, I, that's, a, that's a facetious question. I apologize. I was just wondering, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, more in the sense of like, hey, do you think uh, anyone has it perfect? Do you think any society, any creed, any dogma has a perfect standard for how to treat other people? No. And I don't know that objectively. But mm, that's very. That's okay. Um, in other words, this is certainly nothing that I have studied. I have a subjective belief in the goodness of most people, but not mm. all people, you sure. know. Uh, some people are narcissists and can do us great damage because of that. Absolutely. And um, however, I have great hope for the capacity of many people to, um, to learn through their lives to be better people. And, and the standard for that is simply, I think, uh, compassion, you know, and as Chad mentioned, the golden rule, you know. And, and um, my feeling about uh, God and religious beliefs is that we are terrified of the thought of dying. Mm. And religions all around the world and throughout history have given us answers that... Um, soothe our pain upon the thought of our own demise with the promise of eternal life. And that is the fiction. Elmo, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I guess like in terms of uh, religion, you know, even from a Christian perspective, we, 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 you know, you know, you, you, we can clearly see that most religions uh, do have this, that flawed, um, uh, I guess, flawed nature and parts. And it's, you know, it, when, what we usually say is that, you know, uh, a hum we humans simply created this religion, but there is one, there's only one God. But yeah, um, uh, when we, I guess, like if if we are, are to grow as a society, I would, and you know, when it comes to that, I would say that 
uh, there has to be some sort of uh, agreement with with uh, with everybody. You know, we we can't just say that oh I'm right and you're wrong. Therefore, uh, we're gonna have to kill ourselves. Well, we we will never uh, thrive as a as a hu- as a human race if we're like that. You know, so I say we continue the discussions and some most people are just never going to back down from what they believe. And I and I I guess like we just have to uh, keep keep you know talking keep debating keep but keep it on a level that is civil and has res- mutual respect and we we and we can establish this i guess what do we call uh this connection and that and we continue that connection so because uh, at the end of the day we're all just one human race and and if we are going to live with each other we have to we have to uh, settle our differences, you know, and agree to disagree sometimes. Sure. I think that's, yeah. Yeah, well said. That's a great point. Well um, the thing about it is that um, there's no problem. You know, we have a pro- well, we have lots of problems with how, how do we run society? How do, how do we um, live and share space with one another? There's nothing about religion and God that solves that problem. Mm. None. In fact, it couldn't be only, solved without it, without that. Yes, it can be solved without it. And, and, and the way that we're approaching it is by conversation, talking, um, trying to figure it out, um, learning, and we're getting better at it. That's why we're evolving as a um, society in, all over the world. So, mm. And very little of that has to do with God at all. God is not necessary, I don't think, for for achieving that. And by that, we're not targeting your specific God belief. Right. We're saying it, all gods. So unanimously. God belief itself. Not you. Yeah. Not no worries, bro. Though, hey, Elmo, where can we find your stuff at? Yeah. So um, you just, you know, if you could just Google uh, Elmo's World Podcast, that I had, um, because my real name is Elmo. So I think hey. I have. The... <laughs> yeah. <cool>. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I, I, I do use this log, logo and I'm going to change it someday. But cool. uh, unless I re- get really big, then it, it will be a problem <laughs> for tomorrow. So sure, sure, <laughs> the lawyers sure. will be calling soon. Yeah, they'll be calling. Yeah. They'll be calling. Uh, Chad, what were we, when you post your podcast, where can we find your stuff at? What have you even called your podcast? Uh, you know, Eric calls it Bourbon Street. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not really sure why it has something to do with um, us being in Kentucky. I think. Sure. Uh, yeah. And, and <laughs> why? You, you know, I guess that, that delivery that was why. so so deadpan. I couldn't tell yeah. for a second. Sorry, yeah, it's I haven't mm-hmm. slept much lately. Uh, <laughs> I'm not quite sure where we're going to put it. Uh, I'm going to actually ask you, sure, Wombat, uh, where sure. we should where we should drop this stuff. Yeah, so. like what kind of channels that we can put it through. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe we can put yeah. it on the radio, Larry. Maybe uh, we can, no, like it's happen. an hour long show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Doubtfire, where can we find your music? Where can we find all these new gadgets that you're getting? Uh, oh yeah, and, and the so, products soon of enough, I'll, I'll, I'll be posting um, YouTube videos on how to use this stuff and nice. how to write tracks with it. And I'll Very have cool. videos with no talking, just showing you how it's done. and. Uh, but for right now, you can, you know, go to my um, Bandcamp page, um, dot, uh, dubshine.bandcamp.com. Nice. Support me. Support me, please. Nice. Very cool. George, what's one thing that you'd recommend that we check out before next week? I, I have no ideas at all. What? <laughs> he, he pulls me in, and then he cuts me out. And I'll go I to Larry, and then know. four seconds later, I'll be like, oh, I got something. I got something. Yeah. Hey, uh, check out some Bernie Sanders memes. They're, they'll oh, be- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I, 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 there we go. I, I, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, okay, I don't have a link for you guys, but um, uh, Woody Allen, there's a beautiful Woody Allen video on YouTube. It's about 20 minutes long, uh, following him through the neighborhood where he grew up in Brooklyn pointing out points of interest in the neighborhood. And it's a, it's very interesting. It's also about 10 blocks away from where I grew up. Sure. So I'm, I'm biased, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. A su- there's a sweetness to it. And I like to recommend it. Nostalgia trips, dude. I'm totally for it. I will go on Google VR 
and go through my neighborhood that I grew up in in, in California. Yeah, and it that'd be cool. Blows my mind that they have like a bus now and there's like street lights. I'm like, I just remember when I used to go to the barber shop and spend five cents on a Tootsie Roll pop. Like I felt so old saying that. And I'm like, well, I was only born in 1985. It's like, but it's 2021. I'm so old. Ugh. And it's just, <laughs> but I'm not old, but I am old. It just makes you realize how much time has passed. Larry, uh, where can we find your stuff at? And Hey, listen, I was, I had this really weird question. I hope you can help me out. I wanted to know what atheism was and what it's all about. Is there oh, anything what it's all about? Oh, yeah. I happen to have a book. What? <laughs> yeah. It's called Atheism. What's it all about? <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> a good segue. And what it's available on Amazon, but most of my content is on digitalfreethought.com. Uh, be sure to click on the blog button for uh, many articles on the subject, atheist music and songs, and a Facebook page. Uh, if you have any questions for the show, you can email them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and we'll answer them on future shows. If you're having any trouble leaving religion, and a lot of people are, you can visit recoveringfromreligion.org for help. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM on Wednesday evenings in Knoxville. Say Who's bye, everybody. Hell, whose hell am I going to, Larry? Ah, uh, George. Buddhist hell. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you to our guests. <laughs> Muslim hell. Christian hell. Bye, everyone. Thank you so bye. much. Bye. 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 bye, everyone. Talk soon. And that's it. It's always sad when they leave because they think that means go. But yeah. we're just saying, yeah. what? That's oh, okay. It's a bad habit of like hanging up the phone, right? It's just like, right. it's, it's, like, it's, like still, nice it's the internet. That's yeah. that's the new generation. There'll be a generation of people who will be like, okay, bye, see you. But they'll stay on the line mm -hmm. because they know. And then there'll be people just before that, but slightly before the millennials will be like, bye, hangs up. It's like, it was a group phone call. <laughs> What's he doing? I can tell him to come back. <laughs> I'm chatting with him, I mean. No, I love Thank you.